All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make this glitch text effect. It's super easy. I just found this the other day working on a project for one of my clients and it's super easy and I'm not even scripting this video. This video is just off the dome because I wanted to get this to you guys as soon as possible. I think it's really cool. Let's jump into it. Okay, so you can see I'm in DaVinci Resolve. I have a blank project here, blank timeline. This is just a 1920 by 1080 timeline. I want this to work really simply. I'm gonna come to my effects, okay? Drag a fusion composition and put this fusion composition down in the timeline. Now for the sake of this effect, I want it to last about five seconds, just because once this effect is done, I'll be able to save it as a plugin or preset so that I can, in my edit page, drag it from my effects panel into my timeline and change on the spot right there in the edit page. I don't even need to go into fusion uh, what I want my text to say. But with that in mind, I want that effect to last five seconds on the timeline. I'm, I have that set to that. Let's jump into Fusion. Now, if you saw my motion graphics for beginners or easy motion graphics video, you'll know that I always like to start my Fusion composition off with a blank background. Okay, so I'm going to put my background in there, make it blank. And now we're going to add a text node. So I'm going to find my text node over here. All right, and I always like my text to be Monsterat. Okay, so now I have my text note in here and it says subscribe because that's what you're going to do right now. The next thing you want to do is grab a merge node. We're going to put this merge node in our flow line right now and we're just going to keep it there for now. We're not we're not quite going to connect it yet. But what's interesting about making this effect is this effect utilizes a mechanic in Fusion where instead of just dragging one output from your node into another input on a different node, you do two outputs from the same node. And I'll show you what I mean. So to act as kind of like a, a transition node between the two text instances that we're going to be using, we're going to search for a node called the dissolve node. So you can see if you search it up here, it's dissolve, just hit OK or enter and the dissolve node pops up and I'm going to show you how this works. All right. So I have my text node. My text just says subscribe. I'm going to take my output, drag it into the background of the dissolve node and then take the dissolve node, connect that into merge and boom, you can see my text appears in my preview window to get that glitch effect. What we're going to do is we're going to come into templates and we are going to search for glitch. The effect that we're going to be using is a default built in effect into DaVinci Resolve. I believe it's in the free version. I'm not sure if it's in the free version 100%. Uh, I know it's in studio because I'm using studio. We're going to be using digital glitch. Okay, so I see digital glitch right here. Drag it up into your composition. Now, check this out. This is what I was talking about. From your output, which you already have a line for, you can click and make another line. See that? Really cool, really neat. And then from here, from the output of your digital glitch, drag this into the green foreground input of your dissolve node. Okay, in nodes, in fusion, green is always foreground, yellow is always background, and blue is always mask. Now, since our dissolve node is set to 100% foreground at the moment, you'll see that in our preview window, our text looks glitchy because that's what our node, our digital glitch node right here is doing. It's making it glitchy, okay? And you can see if I play it, it looks glitchy. It looks like it's glitching out. And that's exactly what we want right now. So for the sake of letting you become familiar with this, I'm gonna demonstrate how if I go into my inspector with the dissolve node selected, you'll have this slider. You can slide the slider down and it lowers the opacity on the effect. Now, because the effect is derived from a single node, it just removes the effect entirely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back up, okay? And I think that what I wanna do is I want to have my text fade on to start, glitch a little bit, and then the glitch to stop. To make that happen, I'm gonna take my playhead down here in the timeline, move it all the way down to zero. Uh, I want this to fade in. So I'm gonna go to my merge node to make the whole thing fade in. I'm gonna go to my merge node, go to blend, drag this all the way down, set a keyframe, okay? And then I'm gonna move to where I want it to be faded in fully, right at nine, nine frames there, right? So I'm gonna take my blend, drag it back up, and now it takes nine frames for my text to fade in fully. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna double that and go to my 18th frame, and this is where I want my glitchiness to go away. I wanna go back to regular text. So to do that, I'm gonna go back into the dissolve node, Okay, on my 18th frame, and that's just where I want it to be. You can make your transition go any point you want. You can make the glitching to stop whenever. I just want it to stop on the 18th frame for me. So I'm gonna keyframe my foreground background slider here on the 18th frame, jump on over to the 19th frame, and then drag this all the way down. So now, if I play this, this is what we get. Right, that's pretty cool. Fades in, it's glitchy enough, long enough for you to like notice that it's glitchy, and then it's not. 
pretty sick. And, and that's pretty much it. This note tree is extremely simple. You're taking advantage of the templates that are given to you within DaVinci Resolve. Like it's literally just I mean, including the merge node, four nodes, you know? So if you can figure this out, you can make whatever you want. It, it's pretty cool. The dissolve node, I don't use the dissolve node enough, I must say. That is a node that I want to try to make an effort to use more. And I encourage you to do the same. I promised earlier that I was going to show you how to make this a reusable template, meaning that in your edit page, you could just drag it from your effects folder right on your timeline line, be able to type in whatever you wanted your text to say, and you'd get this. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty cool. Now to do this, it's called macro. We want to make a macro. Uh, and that's another word for plugin or preset. So to do that, first thing you want to do is you want to select all of your nodes except for the media out node. And the reason for that is, is when you drag that effect onto your timeline, your timeline already knows that there is an output signal that it needs to show you. It needs to show you whatever you put on the timeline, okay? But if within that output signal, there is another output signal, in this case, the media out, it's not gonna know what to show you because there's two output signals trying to trying to battle for what to show you, right? You don't want that. You only want one output signal. So we're gonna leave the output signal out in this case. I hope that makes sense. Sometimes I feel like I don't explain things very well. You don't need an output signal when creating a preset just because it already knows that it needs to show you whatever you're making a preset for. So once you have all of the nodes except for the output node selected right click press macro and then create macro and here you'll see this menu pop up what this menu is is the customization menu for how you want to set up your preset okay the first thing you need to do is come up here to macro name i keep saying preset it's just another word for macro you could refer to it as whatever i'm going to make my macro name called glitch text okay so i'm going to type that in Okay, I got that typed in now. And so now you're looking at all of these things here and wondering what they are. Well, these are just all of the nodes that you have in your composition. And there's obviously a lot more than just six in this list because there's only six nodes in the composition. The rest of them are buried inside the digital glitch template, okay? So that's what all of the rest of these are. You don't have to worry about those because we're only gonna deal with one. We're gonna adjust our text one node because the text that we wanna change is within the text node, okay? so. You can ignore all of the rest of these, come down here to your text one node. And I will say in the future, if you are trying to make macros or plugins for anything else, uh, sometimes you have to take a moment to look at the list and go down one by one and find the node that you're looking for. Uh, it might take a minute, but just trust the process. It's there. So I'm going to go into my text one node. Okay. And you don't need to do anything with these initial uh, options here or the image uh, sub menu. So I'm going to collapse the image sub menu. And in the text sub menu of my text one node, this is where you want to check some things. Okay, so I want to be able to change the text that I could type in and that's called the style text. So I want to check that right here. And by checking that, that tells the software that, oh, he wants to be able to change this later. Okay. I want to be able to change the text. I want to be able to change the font style and color of my text. You don't have to choose those things. You could choose more if you want. Uh, that's just what I want to be able to have access to control later. Okay. So that's all done. I'm going to collapse my sub menus, collapse my text one node, and that's pretty much it. There's not a lot that goes on in this menu for this specific effect. The next step is saving your effect so that you can use it later. There's a couple ways to do this. So if you come up to your window and press these little dots right here in the top right, you have multiple options for how you want to save it. You could save, save as, and save as group. Using save and save as is an okay option because it gives you the option still to take your preset, throw it into your uh, edit page on your timeline and be able to make your adjustments there. But what's cool about save as group is if you are in your edit page and you want to go back into fusion to make an adjustment later on, you can, because you've saved it as a group, you can open that group up and get into the nitty gritty. And that's how I like to save my presets. Personally, I don't make any other save type except for save with group. So that's what I'm going to do in this case. Now, depending on what system you're using, whether it be Mac OS or Windows, there will be a different root file system for where to save your effect. In this case, you can see I'm in app data, roaming, black magic design, DaVinci Resolve, support fusion and macros. You'll notice that I don't have any macros saved here. And that's because I personally don't save my presets or my macros in the macros folder. I like to save them in my templates folder. So I'm going to go back into the fusion page go to templates, edit, generators, ERI, and ERI is the name of the folder that I made for all my own personal presets. And you can see I have all of these presets here, some of which are available for sale on my website. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, but this is where I want to save this one for now. Okay, now you might not have all of these same folders 
and that's okay. I, I didn't have them to start also. Uh, if you don't have them, just make them. You can just right click, new folder, type it in. It's you wanna go into your app data, roaming, black magic design, DaVinci Resolve, support, fusion, templates, edit, generators, and then name your folder whatever you want to. I, in my case, named it ERI. Okay, so you can see I have all of these other presets here. I'm gonna press save because I have my glitch text dot setting applied, press save. And now what happens is that preset is available within that folder. So I'm gonna close out of this menu right here, go back into my edit page. And what I'm gonna do is come over to my effects panel, go under generators, ERI, and that's the same ERI folder we had open earlier. And you'll see here, there's an option for glitch text and I can drag this onto my timeline. Uh, let's watch it, see how it plays out. Pretty much exactly how we set it up in Fusion. It fades in, it's glitchy, and then it's not glitchy. Where it's really cool is if you select the clip, you can come over here and change what you want it to say. I made my text here say like and comment because that's what you're gonna do right now. And I could change the color if I want. So I wanna change the color to like this blue color, right? Like this aquamarine teal blue color. That's all glitchy, comes on. And that's that. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's this is a really cool thing. I just discovered it literally like two days ago. Like I said, working on a client project, a project that uh, I'm being paid to do for a company. And I needed to get this out as soon as possible because I thought this was just so cool. And this particularly highlights all of the freedom that you have with Fusion, like all of the different things you can do. And you can see here, if I go into my Fusion, and before I do that, I want to show you how to go back in and change this. So if you want to change your no tree later, you have this on your timeline, right? In your inspector, you can come up to this little magic wand thing right here, click that, and that will take you right back into Fusion. And once you're in your composition, you're gonna see that you have this one group here called glitch text. To uh, adjust the things in that group, because we saved it as a group, you can either double click on it here and it'll pop up in a little window, or you can right click ungroup. But be aware that if you right click on group and go back into edit and try to make changes, uh, you won't be able to make changes because it's not reading it as a group anymore. So I'm going to undo these things back in here. Let's go back to blue where we were. Another way to go back into Fusion, you can either just you can press the wand button up there or you could right click, press open in Fusion page. That's my muscle memory. That's what I prefer to do personally. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can see this is really simple. There's, there's what, four nodes total? One, two, three, four, five. Five nodes total, including the merge node. You know, this isn't very complicated, but it's really cool. Uh, so I didn't even script this video. This is just right off the dome. I really hope you guys learned something uh, in like this style of video just because I really enjoy doing this. Speaking of really enjoy doing this, man, like my subscriber count has jumped like, I wanna say 10 to 15 since just the last Friday. And that's that's unheard of for me, you know? And I hope that my, my goals are so realistic that in a couple of months I could look back at that and say, those are small numbers now. Nonetheless, I'm still very thankful for the numbers that you guys are being able to provide to me right now for the work that I'm putting in. Uh, it's very rewarding to see comments saying like, this was a great tutorial or you helped me out. There's just a feeling that I can't can't describe that is just so powerful that comes from that and I love I love getting those comments just seeing positive uh, feedback come in from the effort that I'm putting into making these videos so if you like the fact that I'm making these videos or if you get anything from them you could really help me out by just pressing the little thumbs up button taking a half a second of your time to press that button it really helps the algorithm and if you learned something tell me what you learned tell me what project you think you're going to use this on and what part you like the most if you have other ideas or something else you'd like to see from me leave a comment and uh, if you think you have anything to gain from me in the future uh, maybe subscribe actually you will subscribe because I'm telling you to anyways I appreciate you guys guys this time. I appreciate you more than you know, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.